Okay, so there's been a real interesting story um, circulating on Facebook and other kind of like media sources and, you know, just regular online news uh, today about this woman who um, is being outed as pretending that she's black um, and she's a white woman uh, in eastern Washington. So Mahoney's been reading about it and she knows the story pretty thoroughly. I'm going to let her uh, tell you the story. Okay, so from what I understand, this woman, Rachel Dozell, is a white woman who grew up with white parents, of course, um, and her parents adopted four um, black children, um, which they said one of them was from Haiti. So three of their children were American and one child was from Haiti. Um, and so Rachel went to um, the, this college in the, in the U.S. Um, I think it's called Howard University. I think that's what it's called. Um, anyway, so I guess it's a famously African-American college um, or university. But when she enrolled, she enrolled as a black woman and since then has been perpetrating this lies telling people that she's black but she's actually white and she's gone so far as to somehow darken her skin um her parents showed pictures of her when she was little and she had like blonde hair blue eyes freckles you know the whole thing but um she's gone to the point of actually darkening her skin um changing her hair to look more um curly and she's now wearing uh, the braids that a lot of african-american women wear um which for some reason she's dyed them blonde even though she's already blonde um i don't know why that is it seems kind of ridiculous to dye your hair blonde again but anyway so she's done this and um for all these years now she's been pretending to be black um but in a really weird way she's also gone so far as uh she she met this man, an uh, older gentleman, um, I don't know his name, uh, his name was never said in any of the things that I read or reports that I'd seen, but um, he's, a, he's an old man and she somehow looped him into calling her his daughter and she was calling him dad and she was telling people that this was her biological father. So people were believing that this was her biological father. Um, she never presented, as far as I know, anyone that was, um, any woman that was her mother. Um, <clears throat> she married a black man, but the, what's really weird here is that the black man that she married, her parents, her real parents, were at the wedding because they have wedding pictures. Um, and she was, so she was at, he was there, but yet he was also telling people that this other older gentleman was her father, which is really weird to me. But anyway, um, and then she adopted her brother from her parents. Um, one of her, one of her brothers, uh, or I think it was her youngest brother that her parents had adopted. She then adopted to take as her son. Um, so, you know, her calling him her son is is not shocking to me because she did adopt him <coughs> um but um yeah so she she's been going around for from what i understand more than a decade telling people that she is black and that this black man is her father um and her white parents just recently outed her as being white and that she's not black at all um, and people are really having like a huge issue with this. It seems like people are really angry with her for saying that she's black when she's not and, and that, but, um, in some ways I understand it. What I don't understand is, is the lying and going so far as to making all these people go along with the lie, like to, when I think about it, I think of, um, the man, you know, I could see that maybe he adopted her as a daughter 
and so he would call her his daughter. Like, um, Narciss very often called me his daughter. Um, you know, but uh, people, you know, of course knew that he wasn't my biological dad. Um, and, uh, but he very often would call me his daughter when we would go places and um, because normally uh, when you meet new people, it's, at least in Blackfoot culture, it's the responsibility of the man in the group to introduce uh, the females, which is normal in Blackfoot culture. So we would go somewhere and he would introduce me to people and he'd say, and this is my daughter, um, Adrienne Heavyhead. And they'd say, oh, well, why is your name different? And I'd say, well, my dad's Martin. Um, and they'd say, well, I thought he was your dad. And I'd say, well, yeah, he's my dad's brother. So that in Blackfoot um, way makes him my dad. Um, because we say that our aunts and our uncles, we call them our moms and dads. So, you know, I could understand that this man may have meant that in the same way. And then she just took it further where she started uh, shutting out her real family and claiming that this man was her biological dad, which that I don't understand. Um, that really confuses me as to why she would cut out her real family out of her life. Um, like she just took that too far because you can always say, yes, he, he adopted me as, as his daughter or, or, you know, we have a, such a close relationship that we feel like we're, uh, daughter and father or something like that um but the lies that she told in order to get to the position that she has um it just it really confuses me like it's one thing to say okay i identify as being from another culture um but it's completely different to lie to, and to basically cheat people um, so that you can get whatever status because um, it's my understanding like just just from the stories that I read and the and the videos that I watched about her <clears throat> that she lied so that she could become the president of the NAACP in, in Washington um, which I don't I don't understand why. Why couldn't she, um, you know, like to me, I don't see it as a problem for somebody to come into my community from outside and live as a Blackfoot person. <clears throat> because as Narcissus used to say, um, you know, we're becoming Blackfoot. We aren't born Blackfoot. You might be born with the skin color, but it doesn't mean that you are Blackfoot. Um, because I know many, many people that are born Blackfoot or Cree, um, and they, they, uh, identify as being white and they will tell people that they are white. Um, which, you know, I'm fine with. And they also, you know, will present people with their parents who are clearly visibly Blackfoot and they'll say, yes, these are my parents, but I'm white. To say that they identify as being white, even though they're not, um, you know, they weren't born into a white family, but their family is Blackfoot. To say that you identify as something, that's like if I said, like to me, that's like if I said, okay, I, de I identify as a man, so I'm going to be living as a man. Or a man says, I identify as a woman, I'm going to live as a woman. To me, that's the same. The problem that I have with Rachel Dozell is... The lying. The lying is what I don't understand. And I think that's what's the most hurtful um, as, as a person who's grown up um, with a Blackfoot family, being Blackfoot and, well, being Native American and having a Native American family, having a Native American identity. <clears throat> but also, I went to school in Lethbridge, and there's a lot of racism in Lethbridge. Um, 
and that so so I don't know I, I lost my point so let's <laughs> pause it here <laughs> all right no, so we'll cut that part out just cut that part out because I, I lost what my point was well no I think it's I think it's related though yeah. see no. okay I think I lost my train of thought so I know but I but I think that what you were saying is um is important because it leads it it leads down a road to one aspect of what makes this case um like so like why people are even interested in it because all right so there's so many interesting facets to this case for one thing you know it brings the whole idea of race as an identity category out um to be discussed and you know we've got we've got other cases like like Mahoney mentioned um, you know what if somebody wants to be a different gender like we got like just recently in the news the big thing with Bruce Jenner changing himself to a woman and what's his name now Caitlin Caitlin his name's Caitlin I made a I made a video about that too um, so we don't have a problem with Caitlin Jenner right and and him wanting to be a woman now now say somebody had been doing had been already a, a man had been already living as a woman for a decade um, at that point when you're like representing yourself do you always need to say you know but I was a man or do yeah. you just say I'm a woman right so so you got this lady who's been who's been identifying as black for a long time she went to a, a, a famous um, African-American college and she's she's employed as a uh, instructor at a university in Africana studies and um, you know she's she's married to an African-American she has African-American Children. Children in her custody, mm -hmm. and she's the head of the NWACP of in Eastern Washington. Washington. You know, at what point are you, are you just do you just identify as as black and and not have to get into the uh, but I was born uh, white when these categories are fictional to begin with. I mean, if you go like like here in in North America, we see these categories as real. But those are those are cultural fictions that we've created, because you go to other other countries. You go to some countries in in South America, um, and you have different shades of, of brown being recognized as different races. You know, whereas well, even even here, um, there's a lot of racism. If you go to Hobima, there's a lot of racism against Blackfoot people for some reason, and then at the same time here in. Um, like I, I heard it a lot growing up around the Bloods and I am a Blood Tribe member, but being that um, my mother came from Hobima, even though we've lived here my entire life, um, people are really racist against Cree people. And my mom has learned Blackfoot. Um, she, you know, is an elder in several of our societies. Um, and she, you know, is a Blackfoot woman by all accounts, she's a Blackfoot woman, but people still have this pre pre prejudice against her because she was born Cree. And, like, at what point does my mother have to say, oh, but I was born Cree? Like, when can that stop? Mm -hmm. um, because to me, that's ridiculous that my mom has to, has to justify that to people, that she was born Cree, but identifies as Blackfoot. When she spent you know, the majority of her life here, she knows Blackfoot, she knows Blackfoot uh, ceremony, she knows Blackfoot history. Why does she still have to tell people that she was born Cree? Yeah. Um, it's ridiculous. Yeah, so that's, you know, this is one side of the, of the whole thing is that it seems to me like people are extremely upset with her um, because she's, for, for one thing, she's, she's, People are upset because she's pretending to be something that they say that she isn't. When in, you know, obviously, to many extents, she is. I mean, in some ways, she's she's more black than a lot of black people, in a way. Um, because she's so immersed in it. And this is something that 
like for instance um, people who are like Homeland Security knows very well that the most dangerous of the terrorists are kind of like the born-again terrorists that you know they, yeah. they weren't really they weren't really as extremist Muslims they might have grew up in North America and had you know had no association with any of that and suddenly they take up that cause those people come, become the most radical yeah. uh, it's, members. It's like, um, like uh, if, if any of you ever watched that TV show that was on a couple of years ago, um, it was about uh, homegrown terrorism where there was a white kid um, <clears throat> who then converted to being Muslim and then he became like an extreme radical where he got to the point of, of becoming a suicide bomber but he was born white, but he identified as being Muslim. Um, <clears throat> and the Muslim community that he was working with accepted him. And this kind of thing does happen. Um, there are, I have read stories of, of white women marrying into um, Muslim society and then converting to Muslim. And they are accepted by their peers as being Muslim. Um, they're accepted by their Muslim community as being Muslim. Um, so why why is it that if a woman, or or if that that is okay, but this woman identifying as herself as black and completely living a black life, um, immersed in the black, American black culture, like why is that so wrong? I don't understand why that's wrong, but I do understand that people are angry about the lying. I think that's the biggest thing is the lying. Um. Yeah, so the, the big thing is the lying, but then, um, I mean, she's, she's obviously taken this, to an the, the lying to an, the, the deceit to an extreme, mm -hmm. right? That a lot of people who are, who are trying to claim an identity that society doesn't like don't go that far as to, um, as to kind of set up this, this apparatus where she has like a, 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 a father that she's representing as her, as her father that really isn't, you know, and, um, yeah, it's, it's, I mean, she, she, she is, she has constructed a deceit, but, you know, in some ways I, I feel like she's done it I don't know like I can I can understand it in it to an extent um, like myself I don't find it that offensive I think that one of the reasons that people are especially offended though um, is because she was white and she's being another um, racial category. That's yeah. particularly offensive to people because I think if it was the other way around... If she was a black woman pretending to be white um, because she could pass for white or something, I think people would, would let it slide. Um, I've seen many cases of this here where we have uh, native Native people that can pass for white, and they and they do. They tell people that they're white. Um, they deny being native at all. Um, and then when they're found out, people just let it slide. They're like, oh, okay. But if it's a white person, you know, that identifies as being native, and they live in the community, they speak the language, they participate in our lifestyle and they're saying I identify as being native then all of a sudden people get all upset yeah right? yet, what you know what I what I see is they use a whole different language in mm -hmm. fact for it because if a white person identifies with another race and really gets into that identification and is living that life what people call it is an appropriation yeah. but you'll never hear that language used if another if somebody from another race is living a very white life and you know not claiming whatever their race is if they can get a, if they can pass as a white person you're never going to hear somebody saying 
they're appropriating white culture, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and that was something that uh, one of the one of the videos that I watched was a Huffington Post video where they had kind of touched on it, but not really. Um, I think they were kind of coming up on it, but they just in their minds maybe hadn't got there yet. Was they were saying, well, I could see if she was if she was a black person pretending to be white, and that would be fine. They actually said that on there. And um, why is that okay? If you're if you have such a problem with a white person um, coming in and living as a black person, then why is it okay for a black person to go and live as a white person, but it's not okay the other way? And why is it okay for a man to live as a woman? but not okay for a black person to, or a white person to live as a black person. I don't understand what, what the difference is between those. Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't make much sense. <laughs> and, you know, another real interesting facet to, for me is I think we're gonna see a lot more of this identi identity mix up because now we have this world that is really a melting pot. You know, everywhere you go, there's people f of all these different constructed categories that we've you know that we've created they're, they're not real we're all just human beings mm -hmm. but um we've we've taken these little phenotype things the our appearance our general appearance and we've um decided that you know people that appear generally like this are considered black and people that consider that uh, appear generally like this are considered white and people that appear like this are considered you know whatever well, um, it's, it's like the the people in in africa during the rwanda thing where they were coming down to saying who was Tutsi and who was, I forget what the other one was, but, you know, by measuring their noses, yeah. you know, and these were like brothers and sisters, you know, um, like, oh, my brother has a bigger nose than me, so he's the other, you know, whatever the other is, um, and, you know, I'm, I'm this one. Yeah, it's, it's, it's ridiculous phenotype stuff. It has nothing to do with, you know, who you are as a person inside and, you know, the beliefs and attitudes and perspectives and values that you carry it has nothing to do with any of that it just has to do with the phenotype stuff well that's you know at the same time too like talking about categorizing and generalization you know there's this thing in where people say oh black men have large penises okay so if uh, a white man has a really large penis does that mean that he's black because he has a really <laughs> large penis um you know or something like that or saying oh um uh, Another one is is Asian women have very small vaginas. So, if uh, if a white woman has a very small vagina, does that mean that she's actually Asian? <laughs> you know, <laughs> that's this to me is what it seems like um, is being compared here, uh, which is is just totally ridiculous. Um, so, <laughs> yeah, it's it's just odd. And then because we're all mixing together now. Like everybody's all living together in these spaces now. Yeah. I think I think we're gonna have a lot more of these identity confusions going on. Well, that's the thing too. Is like okay, um, there's a lot of people that intermarry. Uh, so if in in like 50 or 100 years, people are gonna be so intermarried at some point where nobody is gonna be considered white or black or or Hispanic or Native or whatever because the people are so intermarried at that point um, there are so many people that are are um, making you know children that are, are half black and half white and you know later in on down the line are we going to be calling you know their children's children's children are we going to be calling their them black you know just because they you know all, of all the intermarriage like how are you gonna tell them apart yeah well it's know? like it's like us like what what did mahoney and i consider to be mm -hmm. right I, am i a white guy and she's a she's a blackfoot person when we live exactly the same way together mm -hmm. um exactly. you know we 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 have blackfoot values and we follow a blackfoot way of life but yet we also live in the in this big barbie house in the suburbs of lethbridge there's some people that consider us they like dead set we're white and they get mad if mm -hmm. uh, if you know that I would consider myself a member of the of the Kana community, but, but at the same time though we have like people like Narcissus who 
you know, always considered Ryan as being Blackfoot, and he would introduce people, uh, like introduce Ryan as his son as well. Um, <clears throat> he would say, "This is my son," you know, uh, when when he was introducing people. And uh, my dad introduces Ryan as his son. My mom introduces Ryan as her son. Um, you know, it's not. Uh, it's like there are certain people that they just they don't understand that how you live is how you is is what you are um and they say oh well I, i'm you know i'm uh they say that you know like for for them they'll say oh well i'm blackfoot but they don't live a blackfoot life to me i don't think that's blackfoot if you're going to a white church you're following the white world um <clears throat> you're uh you know you're completely entrenched in that world then to me you're not Blackfoot anymore. You've become a white person um, because you live a white life. You don't you don't follow Blackfoot values. You don't follow a Blackfoot lifestyle. So you're not Blackfoot. Um, and I would say that you know if if you do and you're maybe you're not from here. Maybe you're from I don't know the Philippines, but you live a completely Blackfoot life. I would say you're Blackfoot because you live that life um you know narcissus always said we're becoming blackfoot not he never said i am blackfoot he said i am becoming blackfoot which you know i believe that's that's right and like the other thing that i used to hear from people like older people um is i'm becoming human i'm not fully human yet um because that's what that's part of the purpose of this life is i'm becoming human so to say, you know, um, that someone that didn't grow up here or wasn't born here is not Blackfoot, I think doesn't make any sense if they are living the Blackfoot way of life. Um, like even me, myself, um, yeah, I identify as Blackfoot, but you know, I also believe what Narcissus said, which I am becoming Blackfoot because I live a Blackfoot lifestyle. And yeah, sure, I might live in this Barbie house in the suburbs, but it doesn't mean that I'm any less Blackfoot than I was, you know, a year ago, 10 years ago, you know, or when I was living on, uh, in the little uh, Jerry Potts, um, you know, low income part of town. Um, Jerry Potts is a street uh, in the city. Anyway, so um, I'm not actually talking about the person. So when I live, you know, on Jerry Potts Boulevard, uh, you know, it doesn't mean that I was less Blackfoot uh, or that I was more Blackfoot then than I am now, just because now I live in this in this house in the suburbs. Um, it doesn't change my identity. <laughs> yeah, so it's, it's all interesting stuff and I don't know, I just find it's it's very curious that this is blown up on this on this lady. I feel bad for her, even though, like, I recognize that she's she's gone a long way to perpetrate um, a lie. What to what to society is a lie. I mean, she's obviously she is living as a as a black woman and identifying yeah, but as it's, that. It's the lying about who her biological parents are, um, and her parents, her biological parents, claim that she threatened her children to not out her, which I kind of wonder about because... Um, we, we can't like, trust them though. They're in some yeah, kind of legal battle like with her. There's, like, she's in some kind of a legal battle with her parents, which makes me kind of wonder if they were fine with this until whatever it was came along and they got into this legal battle and then they were like, oh, well, we're now we're gonna out you. Yeah. You know, um, yeah, it seems like they're doing something vindictive, yeah, because exactly. this has been going on a long time, <laughs> and now suddenly mm -hmm. they're putting her out there, yeah. So, to, to have somebody like uh do that, like obviously, her parents were fine with it for a long time, otherwise, they wouldn't have allowed her to adopt her youngest brother, uh, they wouldn't have allowed her husband, you know, but they would have had a big problem with her mar marrying a black man, they would have had a problem with, with the way that she looked long before and they would have outed her long before this ever happened yeah so obviously they didn't have a problem with it but now there's something going on between them that they suddenly have a problem with it yeah and, and it's actually so. to me it strikes me as very unparental because 
Mm -hmm. um, really, by doing this, they're ruining her career. They're yeah. ruining. They're ruining her career. They're like they've and fucked done, her big time. She's done a lot of really good things. I mean, she's made it to being the the president of the NAACP in Washington, which you know is huge. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, they've really you know they probably destroyed her career at the university, which she'll probably be forced to resign from now. She'll probably be forced to resign from the NAACP as well, which is is terrible. Um, I don't, you know, it's it because her parents have have come out and done this and. Sure, her parents say, oh, well, she grew up in a loving household. Well, from the outside, anybody can look like they have a loving household. You don't know what happens once they close their doors. Um, take, for instance, our neighbors that we had in the last neighborhood that we lived in. I mean, on the outside, yeah, sure, they look like a perfect family. Um, you know, very Barbie-looking mom and handsome dad that was part of the fire department. And then, um, you know nice looking kids they had three kids but then it would come to the evening when they're behind their closed doors this guy would be yelling and swearing at his kids and his wife and beating them every single night like every single night and even though our doors and windows were closed we could hear them like we could hear the thing the horrible things that he was saying to his kids and to his wife and and all kinds of things and um when he would come home angry, like you could hear the terror in his wife's voice as soon as he would walk in the door because he would start yelling as soon as he'd walk in the door and you'd hear her, she'd be like, what? I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I didn't do anything. And she'd be like terrified. You could hear it. But yet, none, nobody outside of that house seemed to know. Like their friends didn't seem to know. Um, and uh, so, you know, people can say, yeah, we have this perfect little life and whatever and present that to the outside world when in actuality they're absolutely horrible people and they can sit there and put on a show and cry in front of the cameras uh, i mean look at that guy uh scott something who mer who, who you know murdered his pregnant wife however many years ago and then went on <clears throat> went on uh tv crying oh please somebody help find my wife and whatever <laughs> after he had murdered her yeah. you know um like how messed up is that or that woman that you know killed her kids and then sit, put, and then went on tv crying claiming that some man came into her house and grabbed her kids and whatever um and yet she was crying on tv saying this at knowing full well that she had murdered her children um you know yeah. these kinds of things happen like parents lie and can put on a show they might love their kids but they don't treat their kids very well yeah so yeah so whatever parents have to say there's something going on there there's some we don't know the full story of what's going on mm -hmm. with the parents it's it's pretty obvious that there's some stuff being left unsaid so yeah and her parents wouldn't talk about what the legal battle is that she's having with them uh when they were asked they were asked well what is this legal battle that you're going through with your daughter they said we don't want to talk about that yeah and they wouldn't elaborate it at all you yeah. know so yeah so interesting story whatever the case mm -hmm. 